In today's video, I am so excited, you guys, because I have some Walmart wood blank Christmas in July DIYs that you're not going to want to miss. Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Melissa. I love to do all things crafty on a budget and I also love to bring you guys weekly hauls and high-end DIYs. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love if you would stick around just by clicking that red subscribe button and then tap the bell and all. That way you're notified every single time I upload. So with all that being said, let's not waste any time. You guys are going to love these DIYs and let's get into it. Okay, friends, let's start off with this welcome sign. It was $9.97. Now, I know that's a little bit pricey. However, for those people who, like, don't have two-by-fours laying around or, you know, they really just want to paint something and decorate it and put it up, this is perfect for you. Even me, who would, you know, glue letters to a two-by-four and all that stuff, um, I really enjoyed doing this project. So I start off with the welcome sign from Walmart and you guys, I'm sorry about the flies. Like I don't know what it is about the flies. They were bad last year, but this year they're like even worse. So I'm really, really sorry. But anyway, I paint my welcome sign, just the background with my crimson Waverly chalk paint. And then I also tape it off and paint the letters with a with my white Waverly chalk paint. Now on the top and bottom, I wanted them to look kind of like candy cane stripes, kind of just Christmassy, whatever. I just thought it would look cute and I'm really glad I did because I love it. Next, I go in with my mini chip brush and my, uh, I believe this is oak gel stain. And I just dry brush all the way around the letters as well as where the white lines are. And then with that same brush, I use my white Waverly chalk paint and dry brush all the way around the edges. I then pulled these little corner metal pieces. I'm not exactly sure what they're called. I know that it's on the package, um, but I actually came across these when I was pulling out my Christmas stuff, and I got these at Michael's one day. I was not really sure what I would do with them, but I came across them and figured they'd be perfect for this project. There were several different finishes, so I did go with like the bronzy one and I glued those down to each corner with a little bit of hot glue. And then to finish this sign off, all I did was glue some greenery at the bottom, make a simple bow with that ribbon that I got from Walmart last year at Christmas time and then glued it to the middle of the greenery you guys and that's it I love the way this turned out. It did not take me long to do at all and I feel like $9.97 is a really good price for this sign Now the second wood sign I picked up were these little pellet planks. They're only $2.74. They're pretty good size and I love that they sell them in the plain wood or you can get it with the white distressing on it. So I ended up picking up two of the natural wood and one of the distressed one. Now in this video, I only had time to use the distressed palette plank sign, um, but I did create a free printable for you guys, actually two free printables. You'll see the other one here in a little bit. Um, but the one here has two in one and then so all together you'll have three free printables linked down in the description box below but i just cut this apart so that i have the bottom welcome to our farmhouse christmas sign to work with and then i pull out my graphite paper from arteza and i trace that on then i go in with my sharpie black paint pen i go over that wording as well and then once i'm done with the wording 
for the little trees, I was kind of unsure what to do for the trees. They looked a little wonky after I traced them on. So all I did was take my paintbrush and the colors that I chose were my Waverly chalk paint in Fern and I forget what the other one is. It's the lighter green one. I'll think of it in a second. And I just take my brush and kind of do a dabbing motion so that it kind of looks realistic for branches and um, like real trees. Moss Waverly chalk paint. I knew it would come to mind, but anyway, um, f for the next step, I take my jute and I glue it to the back of this sign. Now, originally I was going to leave that hanger on there, but then once I started wrapping the jute, I really didn't like it, so I just pulled off one side so that I could wrap it like crazy on the one side. There was no pattern or rhyme or reason. I believe I wrapped it about like 10 or 12 times. I don't know exactly you guys, but I just did it to my liking. Um, it was just to kind of cover up that empty space. And then I took these bottle brush trees that I got from Dollar Tree last year and I paint two of the smaller ones with that fern. And then I just left the bigger one white I glued them all together as you see here with a little bit of hot glue and then once they were glued together then I took a piece of this ribbon well first I took the ribbon I cut it in half and made a simple bow now if you guys have not seen my finger bow trick I will leave that linked in the cards in the right hand corner now the bow tricks towards the end of the video but i do give you 11 different super simple bows to make i know many people have trouble making bows so um that video is there for you guys but i just made a simple bow a little teeny tiny bow they're so cute and originally i made two because i was going to glue them down to the smaller ones but once I put this all together, I really didn't like the way that it looked. I liked it better in the middle. So I just took the one little bow and glued that down to the middle of the trio of trees and then glued that down to the middle of where I put uh, wrap the jute around the sign and that was it you guys this one was so simple so easy to make I grab I literally made this with like not very many things and don't forget that I will leave the free printable for you guys down in the description box below and look how cute this is I absolutely love the way that this sign turned out and I know you'll let me know what you think as well Okay, friends, now these trays, there is three of them for $10.64. Again, you can get it in that whitewash or the natural wood. Um, about a year or maybe a year and a half ago, I don't remember exactly, but I actually did a video using the natural wood ones. I can link that for you guys as well if you did not see that video. But for this one, I wanted to use the whitewash trays. Um, so just look at this deal. I really love these. Now they're the lighter wood. It's not the best wood or the most expensive wood, but you get three of them. They're different sizes. This set is already distressed for you. It has the handles. I think it's an amazing deal. Let me know what you guys think, but we're going to work with the smaller one today. Um, if you guys want me to do one more video or if you want me to do the rest of the Walmart items that I got from um, for this video that I didn't get to do and do fall items in those, let me know. I can do that. But I take the smaller one. I cut the handle off. I then take this little house from Dollar Tree. It's a kid's toy. 
take it out of the package and cut the little um, pieces off the sides because you can hook the houses together if you buy several um, different ones. And then I took a wood plank from Dollar Tree, measured it out because I wanna put a sign above this, cut that down, and then I painted my little house white. And while I was painting it, I figured out that you can pop this apart and it's much easier to paint. Um, I should say it's much easier, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> I should say that it is much easier to hold and paint when it is apart than when it's together. So just keep that in mind. It's totally up to you. Um, it slides right back together. So I gave this two good coats of my white Waverly chalk paint. And sometimes because this is plastic, when you go to paint your second coat, the plastic wants to pull up. So if you're having that issue, just use that dabbing motion, kind of like we did with the trees on the sign. Um, but you can also use that technique if your paint is kind of like sliding off because of the plastic underneath. So anyway, just wanted to give you guys that little tip. For the windows, I wanted to cover those up completely. So I just took some black construction paper, covered all of um, the windows, except for the ones on the side because you're not going to see those. And then I figured out that the front windows pop out so easily. So that's useful to know when you're actually covering the windows. You can pop it out first, paint it white, and then cover your windows from the back and then paint them how you like. You guys, you can customize this. You can paint the trim and all the little details any color you desire. I personally chose black. Y'all know me. I love farmhouse. So I chose black edging for all of my little details and a black roof. And then I popped my windows back in once I was done with all of the detailing. I also painted the door black. And um, if you guys want to pause it and just kind of see how I painted mine, that's totally fine. So once I was satisfied, I put my house back together and I painted my wood plank with my white Waverly chalk paint. And then I distress it with my mini chip brush and that same oak gel stain. I love the way that the gel stain distresses on the edges. Um, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I, I feel like the gel stain just gives it an extra touch. Once the gel stain was dry, then I take that second printable that I, that I will have linked for you, uh, free of course, free printable, and I trace that on with my graphite paper and then go over that with, once again, my black paint pen. Keep in mind that you will have to resize this. So what I do is I get my free printable, I open up a Word document, I insert a photo, and then I resize it down. So just keep that in mind. But once I was done with my wording, then I took this Chalk Couture transfer that I got, I believe, last year or the year before at Christmas time. I don't believe which one. But that's the nice thing about Chalk Couture. They're reusable. You literally can have them for years to come. Um, so I take the little greenery edges and I transfer on the greenery with my pesto chalk paste and the berries with my candy apple red. And then once I was done with the little embellishments, then I take some faux greenery, cut that up as well, and glue that down underneath some of the window sills. So I go underneath the window sills for the ones at the top and the bottom. And then I also glue some right above the door as well. Next, I made little tiny bows again. Now, these are not the easiest to make, you guys, but I did manage to get them down. You just have to use the finger bow trick and then kind of just like shimmy them. So keep pulling it smaller and then pull the middle part towards the bigger part and then 
uh, pull it again to make the loop smaller, so, so on and so forth. But I did two smaller red ones and then a buffalo check one for the middle of the door. And then the mini ones obviously are at the top bottom windows. And then I took Jenga blocks to the back of the sign, two on each side to raise this up glued that down to the top with some hot glue. And then I also just left the house the way that it was because it wasn't gonna fall out and I thought that it would be really cool to be able to change that out. So let me know what you guys think. I absolutely love the way that this turned out. I love the house and the little sign with the bows. Oh, just everything about it is getting me so excited for Christmas. So let me know what you guys think of this DIY as well. Okay friends, this is our last DIY. It is a wood palette sign for $6.87 and I thought that was a pretty okay deal. It's not the best deal in the world. However, I like the fact that it's pretty much already started for you for the project that we're gonna do today. Um, now this one's a little bit more detailed, so just stick with me. So we're gonna start off by removing the plastic, obviously, and then I had to take my heat gun to remove those little um, hangers because that glue was really stuck on there. I mean, whatever glue they were using, and it's hot glue, <laughs> I need to find me some of that. But anyway, I heated it up really well. You can see it's pretty much burnt, and then I took my straight edge razor and I just kind of went underneath of that clothespin. I did not want to rip the wood. This is that like layered wood. So once I removed both of the clothespins, then I just sanded down the excess glue and I took an extra I believe these are quarter inch square dowel rods. I have them linked in the description box in my Amazon shop. And I just lay it down going diagonally. I measure it, cut it down with my miter shears, and then I like lay it down again to, it's like measure twice, cut once deal, kind of deal. <laughs> and these are tricky, you guys. I literally have to cut and measure and cut and measure. These miter shears do not cut the straightest. You really have to cut slow and then even then they don't cut the best. So a lot of people like love these things. I'm not the biggest fan of them. Now they did work. Um, I did have some gaps. You guys, I'm not a perfect crafter. If it can fit in there and then I can fill in the holes, then you know what? Let's do it. <laughs> so it doesn't have to always be perfect, you guys. I just wanted to say that. Um, once I cut all of my pieces down, then I go in with my wood glue and a little bit of hot glue. I glue down the um, cut pieces first on either side just to make sure they're gonna fit nicely. And then I glue down the longer piece right down the middle, making sure that I also glue those edges. That way the wood glue kind of acts as a little bit of a filler for you. So once we do the next step, um, I just kind of uh, made sure there was no excess wood glue. I sanded down the edges and then, or I should say, the step after the next. <laughs> so once you put in your lightweight spackling, you're not going to have to put as much because some of that wood glue, like I said, already acted a little bit as a filler. Doesn't fill it completely, obviously, but it definitely does help. So I just fill in my gaps with that lightweight spackling, like I said, from Dollar Tree. And then to remove the excess from like right in the edges where I couldn't get to, to remove the lightweight spackling. I used that little embossing tool to make the edges look nice and clean and then sanded it down once it was dry. 
I then used my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain to stain this. I love this because it's water-based. It doesn't stink. It's non-toxic and it dries really super quick. I have Dixie Belle's website linked down below. I am not affiliated with, affiliated with them in any way. I just love their products. Um, but once it was dry, then I went in with my mini chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I distressed the entire thing. Now I went back and forth. I debated rather I should distress it with the crimson Waverly red chalk paint, but I ultimately decided on the white just because it's more versatile and I could change out that wreath. Um, so that's the reason I went with the white, but if you like the red, you go for the red. Next, I take this grapevine wreath that I got off of Amazon. Again, I will have that linked in my Amazon shop. And I had this greenery in my stash. I have no idea where I got it from, even how long ago I got it. <laughs> but I did take it off of the pick. I glued them down. Some of them I were some of them I was able to just shimmy into the grapevine wreath, but because the stems aren't very long, some of them I did have to glue down. So once I was completely um once I completely went around the wreath with my greenery, then I took this ribbon that I once again got from Walmart last year at Christmas time. Y'all, I love Walmart ribbon, especially on holidays. So I just make a simple bow and I tie that to the bottom of my wreath. Sorry, y'all, I got ahead of myself. I forgot to mention that before I did the bow, I wrapped some berries around the greenery. Um, and now we're gonna work on the sign. So I just give this a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint, and that is a wood plank from Dollar Tree. And then I took that other printable that we cut in half. I cut off the Holly Jolly, and I just used the tree farm portion and I transfer or I trace that on with my Arteza graphite paper and then used my little teeny paint marker from Hobby Lobby to um, go over that wording. Now I also wanted to show you that you don't need graphite paper. You can just use the back of a pen or you know like scratch it with a pencil and then it, you can't see it the best like you do with graphite paper but it still does work. So I did that with the tree because originally it was just a little bit too high. And then I went over it with my paint pen, but to give it a little dimension and color, I used that same technique that we painted the trees on earlier with, just like a dabbing motion. And then I distressed the edges and the sign with my oak gel stain. I then glue this down to the wreath with some hot glue and set that aside. Next, I take this piece of poplar from Home Depot that I've had in my stash forever, and I just kind of eyeball like how long I want the top piece to be. I measure that out and cut that down with my saw. Now, I get a zillion questions on my saw. This is linked in my Amazon shop down in the description box as well. Um, it's just a one-handed mini circular saw. Um, but once I had my piece of poplar cut down, then I take a yo-yo from Dollar Tree. I take it apart and throw the string away. I also pulled out my pop dots and you don't see it here, but I also uh, painted two large popsicle sticks as well or tongue depressors, stir sticks, whatever you guys want to call it. Um, but I paint all of these pieces with my ink Waverly chalk paint. Next, I take my large popsicle stick. I hold it to the top of my sign and just kind of eyeball like how um, long I want it. There was no exact measurement to this. Um, if you haven't figured it out, we're making a faux barn wood door. <laughs> so I wanted this to look as realistic as possible, obviously. So you're going to glue your 
um, yo-yo to the front. And technically on a barn door, it rolls at the top of the metal piece. So I just cut that down to size, glued that down, and I repeated the same step on the other side. And of course, your girl put way too much hot glue. So all I did was take my Chalk Couture squeegee and just kind of run it along that hot glue while it was still like drying. And then I was able to pull up the majority of the paint that had came out of the edges and then just painted that black. Like I said, these little yo-yo pieces are going to go at the top. So I just took some hot glue at the top of the popsicle sticks and then glued those yo-yo pieces down. Now I did have to reinforce in the back with some hot glue, but of course I have no idea what happened to this footage, but I did distress it, put the pop dot stickers kind of like where the hardware would be. And then I took my rub and buff and I put that on the faux nails. And then all I did was distress it white. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. But I glued the wreath down to the middle and that was it, you guys. I absolutely love, love, love this sign. I have to say this is definitely my favorite DIY that I made this week. But I always love to hear what you guys think down in the comments below. As always, you guys, thank you so much for being here. If you guys are still here, type a Christmas tree down in the comment section. Again, let me know which project was your favorite. If you guys need any ketone information on how I recently lost 60 pounds or how you can get better mood and focus and energy, um, or if you need chalk couture information, just um, text my number at 302-204-0881. Yes, it is actually me. Um, and I can get that info to you guys. Just type the word ketone or type the word chalk couture and I will get that to you guys. So with all that being said, thank you guys so, so much. I love you guys so much. If nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy. You literally can do anything you set your mind to. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Don't forget to stop, like, comment, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.